Hey guys, welcome to the video. So today's video is actually going to be doing a bunch of random uh, backgrounds that I'm going to make up for this video, so <laughs> stay tuned you guys. We're going to use this to make sure we don't get any paint on the floor. And what is this you may ask? This! You guys don't know what this is either. It's like a tarp. Okay, as far as the canvases go, we're actually going to be using a bunch of different size canvases because I didn't want to go to the store to buy a whole bunch of the same size canvases and I thought it'd be more interesting using random canvases. Like for instance, we've got like these small ones right here. It's a little dusty, you know, because I haven't used it in forever and I painted it black. So there's one idea for you, paint it black. Um, but yeah, so we've, we've got a a ton of these that we're, we can use. Some, some white ones I painted too. We've got a uh, few of these smaller canvases here as well. Sorry, the lighting keeps jumping back and forth when I show stuff like this. Like, watch this. <laughs> watch that. But yeah, so we've got a uh, few different white ones as well we can go ahead and use for this video. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and have some larger sizes like set these ones which are brand new which the lighting is messed up again stop doing it stop it just stop it but yeah we've got these stop it we've got white ones that are a little bit bigger we've got white ones that are just a little bit bigger okay so they're yeah so yeah we've got some of those i have no idea how much paintings we have we're gonna do for this we're just gonna do a bunch of random backgrounds and then i'm gonna have to buy a bunch of paintings for this and then we have these the lighting i need to buy more um, we have this big canvas. Watch out for the lighting, guys. It changed, yes. Uh, when, oh, sorry, no, this one's a finished picture. We're not using that one. <laughs> We've got one in that size, so, yeah. And last but not least, we have one final canvas that we will most likely use, but I'll probably regret. Actually, I don't know. We'll have fun with this. Lighting changed again, didn't it? But yeah, we have this. We have we have this big, huge one here. I know the lighting sucks when I show these because they just shines off of them and makes it really, really bad. But we've got this big, huge one here as well. So stay tuned because that's what we're gonna be doing today. And uh, yeah, check you guys out in just a little bit. Then, hey, so let's get started. Let's put the tarp on the floor. Let's call it a tarp because I don't know what it is. Put it on the floor. All right, guys. So first, we're gonna go ahead and just place that tarp on the floor. I'll call it a tarp, I don't know what it is. And here are our small little canvases we're gonna be working on. So, for the picture number one, um, here's my inks right here. So for the picture number one, this is actually gonna be using just the inks. Now I was just kinda messing with all of these canvases, trying to see what I can do out of them, see what interesting techniques I can think of. Um, so with this one, what we go ahead and do, what I did, I just put some water straight up on the canvas there, just a whole bundle of water. Went ahead with like this uh, dark pink, just splattered it onto there, it's just ink. And then I splattered some red ink on there just a little bit. And then I went ahead and added some orange. And then I just kind of let it seep through like that. So just making sure it filled the canvas. After that, I went ahead and added some green color in there because I wanted some variety. And then I added the added the yellow in there as well. So just a little bit of that just to give it a little brighter taste, I guess. So then I went ahead, I just kind of wiped it up a bit because it was just way too much. And I just let it sit there and dry. So once it dried up, it looks like a camel. So yeah, looks looks like a, like a weird camel, like as if I did that on purpose. But I did not, actually. This was all an accident, guys. But yeah, so that's how I did the first one. So if you guys want to, if you guys like that one. Second one right here, it's like a green foresty kind of color. And I really love the texture on this, by the way. I think it looks pretty awesome. So the way I went ahead and did this, you'll have to see because it, it's pretty it's pretty easy. So I went ahead got just a white paper here and this one is actually waterproof. Well, not waterproof, it's for watercolors. Um, I just kind of soaked up some of that ink from the ground. And then I went ahead and I put a little bit of the inks just straight up on the board. Added some um, teal color, some blue color, some green on there. And then what I went ahead and did, I just pressed that canvas down onto the board several times until I covered all the edges. And then there we go. Look at how beautiful that looks. It's already working out. And then I went ahead and just got some of the edges, I mean the corners as well, just because I like to fill up the corners majority of the times. 
And there we go. We're not actually done yet, though. That's the great part. We got this rubbing alcohol stuff. That what we do, we just splay, uh, just splash a little on the fingers, and then just splash it on the canvas. So once you splash it on the canvas, it makes like little, little pools, you know. So it's kind of awesome. And just let that sit around. Third canvas. Here we come, guys. This one is also same colors, basically more like the foresty kind of look to it, but I don't know. I, I like this one too. I think it turned out really nice. So I had some black canvases that I painted over a while ago, so I went ahead and used that. Got a plain piece of paper as well for watercolors. Sprayed which colors I wanted to put on there, which was like the dark green, the light green, and a light blue color. So I went ahead, at first I just tried to go ahead and just put it onto the canvas plainly like so. Just spreading around everywhere. Alright, so I went ahead and added some blue under there and I ended up needing to put more color into the painting. So I had to squirt some more color under there and apply that as well. So, once I got the colors on there, however I wanted it, I have this little sponge here, it's an art sponge, and I went ahead and just kind of uh, mixed them all together like so. Yeah, and then don't forget the edges, guys, if you guys want to do this. And you can also just dunk that sponge straight into the paint and then get it like that. So, I added some black into there as well because I just kind of wanted a little bit of a darker shade. But I wasn't liking how the black was looking just placed on there. So, I added some blue, try to see if I can calm down that black color. Um, and then I added some more, but you can keep it like this. It doesn't actually look that bad, but I didn't really like it. So, I added the blue straight up on the canvas just because... It'd make it a lot easier whenever you're using the sponge. I just added all the colors just straight on the canvas. And I got that sponge again and went over it. So you guys can layer this one up as much as you want. And don't forget about the sides if you guys like the sides cover too. So that's the ending result. And I actually really like the way this one turned out like that. Like the darker colors and then there's brighter colors and it's just not too mixed. Alright, so we've got the next painting here. So this one, like I said, like most of these beginner ones, they look almost the same with the colors and everything, but I love the patterns on this one. This is probably one of the more simpler ones that you guys are going to be able to do if uh, you guys want to follow my technique on this. So I added all those colors just back up on that paper, and I went ahead and just let them mix in a little bit here and there. I didn't mix them with the brush, that ruined it, and then I just went ahead and smack dabbed it right in the middle. Went over that like three times four times maybe five times got the corners into there the sides I mean why do I keep saying corners the sides and well bam guys that's it this one is so nice like this one is so easy and so nice I love it I'm gonna use that technique more often okay going on to the next canvas here we've got this like blue and uh, oh it's like a teal what's the color that I'm looking for I don't know but anyways you guys know so it's a white and like greenish blue color I can't figure out what the color called what the color name is called so forgive me okay so we got a black canvas here and so what I did with this one I just got my white paint and squirted it all over I ended up putting a little too much paint on here though so that's not that great but I went ahead and got all of the sides as well just because we want to make sure we cover it up I tried knocking off as much of that paint as I possibly could and then I went over with this like sparkly green blue color and just kind of dabbed it in like spots which actually kind of would have looked nice with like spots too, but it doesn't matter. So I went ahead and I put the ceram wrap on top of it, and then I just went ahead and kind of pressed it around here and there with my fingers just to make sure it kind of smudges the paints a little together. And then once I went ahead and did that, I took off that wrap and uh, it turned out sort of like this. I went ahead and did that twice because I liked it better going over it twice. So now we have this purple textured kind of color. Now on this one, I went ahead and I did like the same technique as the last one. So we did use that uh, Ceram wrap on this one as well. And yeah, the canvas is just purple and I like the texture that it makes. You can do any color you want on these, by the ways, guys. Okay, so I start off with a black canvas. I squeezed out all of the paint that I literally had in that tube of paint now. And I went over the purple all over the canvas and on the sides and everything as well so make sure you guys get those sides I keep repeating that stop repeating it just Malgum just Malgum okay, that's what... alright so I went ahead and I layered it twice and I put that ceram wrap right on top of it again kinda of pressed it around here and there with my fingers just to give it a little bit of texture and when I peeled it off voila 
Now there's actually way too much of that white paint still on the floor, so it ended up getting all over this purple canvas. But like I said, these are just like backgrounds, so um, just random backgrounds I'm trying out, so it just doesn't really matter too much whether I get some on the corners in or not, so not really worried about it. Alright, so let's go ahead and set that aside. Alright, so this next one I call it the salt trick. So yeah, we're gonna be using salt, water, and watercolors for this. Like, it makes this really nice texture in it, so it's nice. So we've got another canvas right there, and uh, yeah, just smack dab it right in the middle there. So here's our watercolors, uh, and here's our salt, and here's our water. So I went ahead and just kind of got that uh, paper, I mean the canvas kind of soaked a little bit with a little bit of the water and I put some lines on the paper and then just put some salt in. So I just kind of sprinkled the colors on everywhere. So to test this out more, I needed more colors to see the results. So I made just a bunch of lines, added a whole lot of salt on there, and yeah, that's basically it. Super simple, that's all I did. So if you guys want to add salt onto your paintings, one, it makes it sparkly, two, you can always scratch it off in the end, and three, it actually really makes a good design on it. So yeah, I just kind of let them soak in just a tiny bit there and dry off. So there we go. Super, super simple. Yeah, I'm not saying do lines on a paper for a background if, unless you want to. But that's just, I was just experimenting. So we've got this next painting here, which I did almost the same thing as the water and salt trick. So I really like this one. Just saying, I really like this one. Okay, we've got our next canvas and I put water all over it so much so that it was just like dripping off. So then I went ahead and just added the colors in however I liked it on there, just to try to get some mixing together some texture onto there and added to blues and greens. I was mostly just using blue and green, you know, of different shades. I went ahead and added the salt on top of it, and so when I added the salt on there, kind of just spread the paints out, but I wanted to add a little bit more water just because I wanted the paints to mix a little bit more instead of just look more stale. So I tried putting like this body spray on there, I don't know why, but I tried spraying it on there to see if it would do anything, but it would kind of sort of do something, um, but it didn't really work too much. So I went ahead and used the alcohol, um, I went ahead and used the rubbing alcohol and just kind of sprinkled that on top of there as well to make like these little pools of weirdness and it was so cool. So I let it dry for a little bit and then I went ahead and added some more of that rubbing alcohol on there. So if you guys want to keep this kind of a texture on it, make sure that throughout the time that it's drying, keep adding a little bit of that alcohol on there. But it turned out awesome either way, so it turned out really nice. Okay, so I don't know what happened here, but I mean, I guess you'll see what uh, what happened here in the video. But this one, this one's kind of cool. At the same time, as it's kind of interesting. I don't know. So if you guys like this one, tell me in the section below. This one's this one's kind of cool, and uh, yeah. So for this one, we're gonna be using Gorilla Glue. So I went ahead and just got like a brown color on there and just kind of spread it around the paper as much as I could. I didn't really care too much about like getting every single spot from here because I kind of wanted to keep a little bit of white in there, you know, from the canvas, just some white blotches here and there. So just kind of spread it around messy on purpose. And I went ahead and I added that Gorilla Glue on top. You guys can't actually see me dripping it on there, but I added it on top and then I smudged a bit with a paintbrush that I was willing to toss away. And then I went ahead with the Gorilla Glue and I just squirted it everywhere, just everywhere. Then I started making a couple of designs on there because I was like, huh, what if I make designs with this glue instead? I wonder how that would look. So yeah, made some designs. Alright, so I'm going to let you guys see what it looks like while it's drying. So as you can see, the Gorilla Glue just starts drying up and when it dries, it dries white. So it's kind of lifting the paint from the canvas and it's kind of just, you know, you start seeing everywhere where you put the glue on. So it's kind of cool how that works. Ta-da! So it's not completely dry yet, so now 
I gave it some time and now it's completely dry and when it's dry you can go ahead and peel it off or you can keep it on there you can just make patterns with this instead of like just wadding up a whole bunch of weirdness like I did so I went ahead and started taking off all of that glue and whenever you take off the glue it takes off some of the paint as well and so it leaves like the marks from where the glue was on so it didn't dry completely so I went ahead and I just let that other part dry up and I designed another like tree looking design on there I guess and this time I spread it around with a toothpick so that it doesn't get so poofy like the other one. Just because I kind of wanted the, you know, the glue in general to be more flat. So once it dried up, I took off all the rest of it. And I left that tree one that I put on there last and I liked it that way. So for this next one, I also used the Gorilla Glue on it. And I used a whole bunch of ink. As you guys can see, I love the ink colors. Majority of these in the end. I think all the rest of them from here on are going to be using mostly just ink because the ink runs really great when it comes to making backgrounds on your canvases. So yeah. So I started off with a blank canvas again. I went ahead and I started making like some designs on the canvas right away just so that I don't have to like take them off in the end and then I spread them with a toothpick just like that last painting I spread it around with a toothpick and just to get the paint a little bit flatter so when it dries it doesn't get so poofy and looks weird and I just kind of wanted to spread around a bit so yeah broke the stick a little bit on purpose so that I can spread it on even better and I just let it dry so once it's dry you guys can actually see it there it's all popped out and it looks really nice you know it's not too crazy like the other one where you just made a bunch of lines so then i started adding water to the canvas just a little bit here and there where i kind of wanted the ink to drip so anyways i went ahead and i uh, got my ink here flipped the canvas upside down and i started just dripping it down dripping it from the top of it so all that water just lets it drip down a lot faster and a little bit more in different you know different ways okay so I also wanted to add a purple color to this because blue looked nice but I added some extra water in there and added the purple because it looked even better like I just love this one added some of that purple into there and just let that drip down too. Now you would think, oh look, the purple and the blue look really nice together. But no, I wanted to add a different color. So I added some more water onto it. And after that, I ended up adding in a little bit of, wait for it, red. Yes, perfect. So I started adding some red into there and just letting that drip down. Now I didn't put as much red as I did with the blue and the purple. I didn't do it on purpose because I kind of wanted it to be a majority of the blue and the purple on there. But yeah, all of these canvases are experimental and I did them all for the first time just testing out different things. So yeah, this one in particular I actually made up myself. So now I just let it dry up after that and we were good to go. Okay, so this one is one of the most simple ones that you can possibly do. And I love the way it turned out. But yeah, like I said, so, so simple. You guys are going to be surprised about this one. I had to take off the wrapping off that when it was brand new. So all the rest of the ink that was left from that last painting, I went ahead and I dunked this canvas just straight into the paint. And I lifted it, and there we go. So you start seeing the colors already. So I did it again, and then I lifted it, and I did it one more time, wait for it, and I lifted it! And that was literally it. And then I just let it dry. That's it. That, that's all you gotta do on this one makes its own pattern and it looks so cool so you can add whatever colors you want in there you can just ripple a whole bunch down too and just do it yourself too okay so we are going on to this really weird looking one now this one actually turned out one of the abstract arts so this painting ended up turning out to be more like an abstract art instead of a background but i mean if you guys really want to you can always make it as a background but it turned out more as an abstract art so i'm just gonna keep it like that okay so this canvas is a little bit bigger for my other ones and I went ahead and I used flowers for this, believe it or not. So I used some flowers, and this one was like a trial and error, I guess. 
seeds because I was at first I tried to place the flowers down with just some water and trying to see if it would make it stay on kind of like adhesive or glue or whatnot you know and then I tried doing that with the petals on there too just kind of pushing them all on there with some water and just hoping that it stays on there once it dries so I did it with all the leaves as well and just kind of placed them in whichever direction that I wanted which I probably could have ended up doing this painting a lot different and a lot better but like I said trial and error so trial and error this is just how it turned out guys So once I finished putting all of those on there, I went ahead with this red ink and just kind of started dripping it in random areas where the water was flowing and I ended up kind of just letting it flow down the canvas because I lifted the corner of the canvas just let it flow down and see what happens. Now this looked nice and all, but I wasn't really like all happy with it and stuff like that. So I ended up sprinkling some water here and there to see if it would like make a different effect on it. And uh, yeah, so I kind of splashed some water here and there and I still didn't like it. So I ended up grabbing this brown ink and I thought I would have a great idea. So I poured some into that plastic area, just kind of poured some of that brown ink into there and got my flower and dipped it in there to see if it would make like a design, but it was a failure. It was a complete failure. I didn't like it, stopped doing it, so I had to think of something else. So I got a whole bunch of yellow paint, just, just a whole wad of it. And then I just kind of started pacing down those, um, pacing down all of the leaves and petals and everything with that yellow, with the yellow acrylic. But the bad thing about this, I didn't actually wait for the red to dry, which I was kind of fine with because then it kind of just smudged the colors and made it look a little bit better. So after I went ahead and I did all the leaves, I went to the actual flower and I got the yellow acrylic and just kind of did it over the big huge flower in there as well. Then I decided, why not just fill the whole canvas like this and just smudge the red and the green to make kind of like an orangey color. I was like, whatever, it's fine with it. Let's let's play with this a little bit. Let's just see where we can what's the furthest we can take this canvas. So once I got all that down, I sprinkled some water here and there in different areas just to give a little bit more of a watery look to it. At the same time, I ended up adding some noodles on there. Yeah, guys, I'm weird, but I heard a bunch of people putting other things on there, you know, so I ended up putting noodles on there. Some people put eggshells on their arts, man, which I'll actually show you that because there's really good ones with putting eggshells on there. So yeah, I put noodles on there. And then I went ahead and I sprinkled some red ink on there and then also some purple ink. I let that drip down as well because apparently I like things just, I like the canvases just dripping the inks down for some reason. So I added some yellow into there as well to add a little bit of brightness colors in here and there in areas. So yeah, I let it drip down as well just to kind of give it more different than just, you know, dripping in one direction. And then let it drip down again and waited for it to dry. So once this canvas dried, guess what we do? I picked off all of the noodles. Yeah, all of the annoying noodles and all of the flower petals and all the flowers, I took it all off. You would think this is actually annoying, but surprisingly fun. For this very, very last painting, now this is like the biggest of the biggest paintings that I did, and I love it. I am so happy I did this one, and it's so easy the way I did it, you guys. So you guys, you can make this at home easily as well. It's so... It's so nice. It's big. It's nice. It's just a big huge abstract art. You can hang it up on the wall. But yeah, so we're using the biggest board that I've got. So I'm using the biggest board that I've got. And what I did, I used this blow dryer and I used my inks. So that's it. Just inks, blow dryer, and also I did use water. So I went ahead and I put the ink on there in the middle. Just kind of let that go around. I just use the blow dryer to spread it around here and there and make some weird designs on it. I mean, you could just tilt the board everywhere, but that's no fun. So I went ahead and I sprinkled some more and just kept repeating the pattern for a while. It wasn't ending up as my desired look, so I added a whole bunch of water in there as well. 
Once I added enough water in there, I went back with that blow dryer, which kind of smudged it a lot more, which was nice, because it let it run around the canvas a lot better. Which is, like I said, which is really nice, just having it spread around the canvas so much more. So the way, if you go back and forth like this, the cool thing is with the blow dryer, it dries in some areas and then it makes, um, it brings the colors back into other areas. So it makes darker shades and then lighter shades and darker shades and lighter shades, just kind of repeats that process over and over again, which is cool. So I ended up adding some green in there as well real quickly and sprinkled some water under there too so that it can go ahead and spread around a lot more. And just repeated that process. Sprinkle some green ink and the blow dryer. I think you can do this with alcohol too and it works really well. But the uh, problem with the alcohol is it dries too fast. If you guys like this video and you enjoyed it and you found some of these tips, some of these uh, background ideas helpful, give me a thumbs up, share this video, um, and comment down below if you guys want me to go ahead and do another one because like I said, I've got so much more ideas. But with this project, I wasted, not wasted, with this project, I used all the rest of the canvases that I had. So, yeah, lucky 13, huh? But yeah, I used all the canvases that I've got, so I had to go to the store and I have to buy some more now. But yeah, so that's my favorite one of all, and give me a thumbs up, you guys. Verse of the week is next. Love you guys, and yeah, I'll see you next time. How do people talk so much? How do people talk so much, eh? Huh. I don't know how people talk so much. My, my lungs are killing me. I'm just kidding, they're not killing me at all. I am actually very much alive. But how do people talk so much? It's so hard. You have to stop and you have to pause at least a little bit.